Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, brothers and sisters. How are you? Good. So, um, I'm really pleased to say that I'm now a member of this Clifton Family Church community. <clears throat> my husband, uh, Leighton Degoti, and my daughter, Rose, and I uh, just moved to Bloomfield, New Jersey. So we're, we're officially a part of the community, and we're really excited to be here. Um, I was living in Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania, with my parents, so we were experiencing a three-generation home. And it was really wonderful, and we were sorry to leave that, but we're also really excited to be here and get to know all of you. And also for <clears throat> our family, um, especially with me working in New York City, it's a lot closer to get to work, so that's good too. Um, so you're actually going to be hearing a little bit about my family today uh, because I'm going to be talking about lineage and ancestors. So I'm going to get to introduce not so much myself, but more so my family. But I want to encourage you that as you're listening, um, as I share about my family, as I share about my ancestry, I really want to encourage you to reflect on your own and your own lineage and your own family that you come from and how it's been impacting you throughout your life. So I just want to mention that. You know, make sure to reflect on your own family and your own lineage. Um, the wonderful brother, he just read the passage from the Chen Sung Yang. Um, but with your permission, I'd like to read it again. Yes. Because it's really one of my favorite passages in the Chen Sung Yang. Um, so you can read along as I, as I read. We are not alone. We are not alone. We have emerged as the resultant beings that harmonize in relationships within the universe. Everything that exists in the universe is included within us. We have within ourselves all the qualities that we have received from our numerous ancestors. Everyone, touch your face for a moment. Just touch your face, your nose, your eyes, your chin, forehead. If you like, you can touch your family's face, but nobody else, let's, you know. <laughs> you have your face today because you inherited. Oh, sorry, I missed a line here. You may feel that your face is your own. That's pretty reasonable, right, to think your face is your own. But it is the result of tens of thousands of years of history. You have your face today because you inherited the blood of your ancestors that accrued over tens of thousands of years. We are truly miraculous beings. We are truly miraculous beings. Moreover, we exist today because heaven has worked behind the scenes to allow the continuation of all the relationships that led to each of us. We are beings of substance, into which all interrelated aspects of creation are invested and projected. Can I get an adieu? Can I get an amen? Can I get a hallelujah? All right. The word of God, given to us by our beloved true parents, for me, when I read these words, I realize that God looks at me, looks at you, and sees a miracle. A miracle. That God is so aware of everything that's going into each and every one of us. Not one of us is alike. We are all unique. We are all a divine being created by our heavenly parent. 
with all that we have inherited from our ancestors. Think about it. Think about just your nose. Think about the fact that from generation to generation to generation, variations of your nose have been passed on. Pretty incredible, huh? Makes you value your nose a little bit more, maybe. <laughs> it's amazing. We are amazing beings. And everybody just look around for a moment. Look around, side to side, behind you, in front of you. Maybe you see some people of your same culture, your same country of origin. But are any one of you the same? Even somebody, how many, how many people from, that are from Japanese descent are in the room today? Quite a lot. Are any one of you the same as the other Japanese of descent in the room? No, you are unique, completely unique. It's amazing, it's amazing. And let's take a moment, so we have our physical eyes Right? And with our physical eyes, we can see each other. You know, we can, we can see the beautiful stained glass windows on the side. We can see the lights. We can see the stage. You can see me. You can see each other. But what if we opened up our spiritual eyes for a moment? We know, right? We have the physical body, and we have the spirit body, and we have spirit eyes. And our, our true father has said to us that if we can open our spiritual eyes, we'd be amazed with what we could see. And for me, when I'm opening up my spiritual eyes and looking out at our congregation here, what I'm seeing is all the ancestors, all the generations that have come before you surrounding this place. How many are excited to be here this morning? All right. All right, we got a few excited to be here. All right. Well, let me tell you, your ancestors are like, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for including me. I'm so excited to be here. So that helps me, actually, to talk to you. I mean, not that you're not exciting. But, <laughs> but there's a lot of energy in this place. There's a lot of spiritual power in this place. with the foundation of the lineages that you stand on, that have brought you to this place right now. All of us, our ancestors, our lineages. So this morning, we're going to reflect on that a little bit, where we come from, and what makes us who we are, and how we've come to this place. So for me, this is my family, and extended a little bit. <laughs> um, this is actually a little more than five years ago, uh, before I was matched and blessed. Um, there's the two lovely ladies on the end are actually Leighton, my husband's sisters. And then you see my mom and dad, and my brothers, Joe and Nathan, and my sister, Laura. And that's actually at Camp Chehaqua, which is our kind of, besides our home, that was our that was our second home, let's say, Shahakwa Family Camp. And uh, I am so deeply grateful for true parents that made it possible for me and all my siblings to be born, and Layton and all his siblings to be born, ultimately. And I'm really grateful for the family that I grew up with. I experienced tremendous love in my family, and it really shaped you know, who I am today. Also, I'm grateful that my family could grow up in this unification community and be a part of this network of brothers and sisters all around the world that are striving to embody true love and build a kingdom of heaven on earth. So I <clears throat> am very grateful for my family, but I recognize that it wouldn't even be possible without these two individuals, who are my parents, Claire, and Jeffrey Hinkle. Anybody know Claire and Jeffrey Hinkle? A few people. They're pretty awesome people. I'm a little biased, but. <laughs> um, often it, it occurs to me that if my mother hadn't met the Unification Church when she was on campus in 
New York, Rochester, New York, and my dad hadn't decided to forego his yoga community that he was aiming to join and go to the Unification Church community instead to a campground. He was put on a plane with a turban on his head and he went to the church, he went to the camp and learned the principle and decided to join the Unification Church. Actually, there was an ad, something like conscientious individuals looking to build a world of peace. He saw it in a newspaper and he said, oh, that sounds interesting. And then he went and looked for our, the Unification Church. So it occurs to me that if my parents hadn't done that and hadn't decided to check out what is this Unification Church, who is Reverend and Mrs. Moon, what is the divine principle, I wouldn't be here today. And not only that, but they also chose to say, yes, I'll attend that matching ceremony and find my future spouse during that ceremony. And they said yes to true parents, to true father, when he recommended them for our spouses for each other. And they made that incredible commitment to be blessed to one another. And then the story continues, and here I am and my siblings. So I'm so grateful that my parents could make that decision, and I know that they were guided by also the, the spirit world that surrounded them to make that decision. And going back further, I have my grandparents. This is my grandparents, Olga and Neil Kelly. Those are my mom's side of the, uh, my mom's parents. And then we have Gerald and Gloria Hinkle on my dad's side of the family. So I'm not gonna, there's a lot of stories that I could share, but I'm just gonna focus today on one set, one side of the family, which is my um, Kelly side of the family, Olga and Neil. So Olga and Neil, they grew up in northern <clears throat> New York. And at the time, um, the, the way for young people to meet and find their potential spouse was at a dance. The dance hall in the big barn, the biggest barn in the neighborhood, was where the dance took place. So, <clears throat> thank goodness they decided to go to the dance, and thank goodness that, as at the time, all of the men, can you imagine if you knew that you were gonna, so young people in the room that are single, can you imagine that you knew that it was at a dance that was the best place to find your spouse? What would you be wearing to that dance? Best clothes. Best clothes. Sharp. You're going to look sharp. You're going to shave. You're going to do your hair. You're going to make sure your pants are crisp. You got a nice shirt on. Ladies, ladies, what are you going to wear? You're going to wear your best dress. You're going to do your hair. You're going to put your makeup on, pinch your cheeks a little bit, as was the custom at the time. Look fresh. And if you're going to stand on the wall, hoping that your future husband will pick you out from the wall, are you going to look like this? Or are you going to look like this? And welcoming and attractive to your potential future husband. And men, young men in the room, are you going to know how to dance? You sure are going to know how to dance, right? Because if you're going to ask a lady onto the dance floor, you better be ready to whisk her around the dance floor. So, this was the setting where my grandmother Olga and my grandfather Neil met each other. And I'm really grateful that my grandmother Olga was welcoming and inviting and that my grandfather Neil went up to the wall and picked Olga off the wall and danced with her. And then the story continued on from there. I'm really grateful for that. And Actually, as it, as it went, my grandfather went off to war right after my grandparents married. Um, so they had some time to date and they had some time to get to know each other, but then pretty soon after he was on to war, as were many young men at the time. Um, and then, you know, came out of that marriage my mother, Claire, and my aunt, Chris, and they raised them. And even going back further, um, I'm really fortunate in that I got to grow up around my grandparents. Um, you know, they both are here in America and, and relatively close by. So I got to grow up actually hearing stories about my great-grandparents 
and hearing stories from my grandparents about their lives growing up. And um, one of the stories that really sticks out in my mind is one that my grandmother told me about my great-grandparents, her parents, um, which were Fies. And actually, as it, as it is, my great-grandmother, her name was Crescentia. So I'm the namesake of my great-grandmother, my mother's grandmother. And, you know, they actually, my great-grandparents, um, immigrated from Austria to America. Anybody Austrian in the audience? Okay, we've got a few of Austrian descent. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I, it actually, when I'm thinking about it, and I was, as I was thinking about the story, it, it hit me that if my grandparents hadn't immigrated to America, I might not be born. There's so many different things that lead into that. So they made that incredibly courageous choice to leave their home country of Austria, where they knew the culture, they knew the language, they knew all the customs, and come to America and start a new life. And I know, in fact, that there's many people here in the audience that also immigrated from your home countries to here, America. And that's no small thing to make such a courageous choice and to start a new life. How many in the audience have immigrated to America and started a new life here? Let's give a big round of applause for these individuals. I think we take, it, we take it for granted. We take it for granted, but it's no small thing to come to a new place and start a life. So my grandparents, they came here and they started a farm in rural upstate New York. Um, <clears throat> and actually, uh, they had four children, my grandmother and three brothers, her three brothers. But sadly, actually, my, my great-grandmother, Crescentia, passed away when my grandmother was only four years old. So my grandfather, who had to take care of the farm, you know, really couldn't spend too much time to raise the kids. So an auntie, one of their aunties, really raised up the kids. And I found out from my mom that when, after she joined the Unification Church, sometime shortly after, she met a spiritualist who told her that my um, that her grandmother, my great-grandmother, had actually, somehow, when, when she passed, that was a condition that allowed my mom to meet the Unification Church, to meet true parents, and to join this movement. And I don't understand how everything works, you know, and, and all the connections, but I'm really deeply moved by that, that somehow that condition, because it was certainly a challenge for my grandmother and her brothers to be raised, you know, without a mother. And uh, <clears throat> they managed, but it's, yeah, it's a challenge when the mother's not there in the home, especially at that time. And somehow that was the condition for my mother to meet the church and for me to be born, and then I have the namesake of that grandmother, Crescentia, great-grandmother Crescentia. So, you know, it just kind of blows my mind, and one of the things that... Um, my grandmother, Olga, told me when I was growing up is that, you know, they, my grandmother and her brothers, you know, her family, they were all growing up at the time of the Depression, the Great Depression in America, which, as we know, is a, is, was a time of, of, um, of really limited resources for most Americans. And many were really limited on food or had no food. There were a scarce number of jobs available. So there were a lot of people that resorted to even begging to get food or you know, had to find a, uh, a place to live somehow. And what my grandmother told me is that any time that beggars, you know, roamers would come to the farm asking for food, my grandfather would always welcome them in and would always give them food and would take some time to just you know, give them some warmth and some, some food and some love and just kind of care for them every time they came in. And likewise, I also found out from my uh, grandfather, um, Gerald, that on my dad's side, that his family did the same thing. You know, he, he, his parents would always give food anytime somebody would come to the door, recognizing that it could have been him or them in that position. So these small acts, you know, we, true, true father talks about a lot, food is love, right? And we don't, and for me, I realized that that culture of giving, that culture of taking care of others in need, is something that my great-grandparents passed on to my grandparents. 
who passed on to my parents, who raised me up and my siblings with that sort of culture of giving and serving and caring for others in need. And there's many other traditions and customs and, and things like that that have been passed on through the generations. You know, and it's a small thing sometimes that really shapes the character, that shapes our characters as individuals. So all of these things, you know, come into who I am. And again, I asked you, you know, as you're listening to my family story, think about your own family. And at this moment, I'd actually like you to close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes. And take a moment to reflect on the stories you've heard from your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-greats, and pick a moment, a story that you've been told that you're really proud of about one of your ancestors. Something really, it could be large or small, that they did, or a tradition that's been passed on that you're proud of, that inspires you. And get that into your mind now. Okay, you can open your eyes, turn to your neighbor, left or right, and share that, share that reflection with your neighbor. Make sure each person gets a chance, just, a bri just briefly share about it. Make sure each person gets a chance. You can also go behind or in front. If you haven't done so already, make sure the other person gets to share. How was that experience, sharing that with each other? It's good. Did you learn something about the person you were sitting next to? Did you learn something about yourself even and your lineage as you reflected on it? So keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> so. You know, coming to this idea of working with our ancestors and harnessing the spiritual power that is within us that comes from all of these ancestors, that comes from the lineage that we descend from. Um, I'd like us to take a moment to watch a short little clip. It's kind of fun. And who's seen the movie Mulan? Okay. So... <laughs> So this movie comes, I mean, this clip comes from the movie Milan, and for those of you who are not familiar with Milan, it's set in China many, 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 many generations ago when there was the threat of the Hun, who were a really tyrannical group trying to take over China. And Milan, this young woman, decides to do something very courageous for the sake of her family and for the sake of China. And this clip that we're about to see is her ancestral family reunion that takes place as they're concerned about her and what she's about to do. Because it was not the custom at the time for young women to join the army. So she actually had to disguise herself as a man in order to join this army. And her ancestors are particularly worried about the outcome. So let's sit back, relax, and watch the clip. and be thinking about what your own ancestral family reunion might look like. Watch over Mulan. So anybody think they might have a few Mu, mu shoes in your lineage? <laughs> 
So Mushu is the tiny little dragon that you saw depicted there. Um, so you can maybe try to conceive of what your family reunion in the spirit world might look like. All the, if all the ancestors, the key ancestors that were concerned about you were together. And um, <clears throat> for me, what I really, what really kind of inspires me about the whole movie of Milan is that it shows how the ancestors are concerned about every act action of the family, and in particular Milan, and are really concerned to guide her and support her and help her be successful. Actually, they just want her to live. But for those of you who know the story of Mulan, um, so Mulan actually really, uh, she totally throws herself into this role of being in the army. And she works really hard. And also Mushu ends up being by her side every step of the way, guiding and supporting her. Although, you know, he has some rough edges he does his best. He really is excited and inspired to support, even though he's made mistakes in the past. He really wants to help his descendant, Mulan, to be successful. And by the end of the movie, you know, sorry, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but it's still worth seeing if you haven't. By the end of the movie, not only does Mulan survive, she just does this little thing, you know, saves all of China. That's it. All of China, she saves. Uh, not single-handedly, but she's, you know, in the movie, she's uh, one of the main reasons why they're able to defeat the Hun army. And the emperor of China actually bestows a great honor upon her and her whole family. So she ends up bringing honor to her family and her, her whole lineage with the support from Mushu. And she does something that was beyond her wildest dreams that she could even achieve. She saves all of China. Um, so it's a beautiful movie. It's in, it inspires me a lot. Even though I'm not Chinese, I resonate with Mulan. I feel like you know she could be my twin sister of another mother, <coughs> as they say. Have you ever heard that? Maybe for some of you, that's a new expression. But um, anyway, just this idea that our ancestors really want to work with us. And I'd like to read a passage for you now from the Divine Principle. Just a moment. Okay. I think this is it. So this is uh, from the chapter on resurrection from the divine principle. And it reads like this. According to the principle of creation, the growth of the human spirit requires two kinds of nourishment. Life elements received from God and vitality elements received through give and take action with the physical self. Spirits can neither grow nor be resurrected apart from a physical self. Consequently, the spirits of people who died before they could reach perfection during their earthly life can be resurrected only by returning to earth and completing their unaccomplished responsibility through cooperation with earthly people. By assisting people of faith living on the earth to fulfill their missions, the spirits may complete their missions at the same time. So our ancestors actually really need us and want to work with us and want to support us and want us to be so victorious and successful in our lives. In particular, in regards to the mission that's given to us from God through our true parents, through our true mother and our true father. So we as unificationists are asked to do some incredible things. Are we not? And sometimes it's pretty overwhelming. Maybe you feel overwhelmed or maybe you feel a little unworthy or inadequate when you hear the words spoken by true mother of what she's asking us to do in order to bring about the kingdom of heaven on earth and in the spirit world. This goal that we're all striving for, you know, to bring about a peaceful world of true love, where the joy of one is the joy of the whole, and the suffering of one is the suffering of all. You know, this kind of peaceful, ideal world that our true parents have been guiding us to be able to create is what we're striving for. And that's no small goal, that's the biggest goal of all 
And all throughout human history, God has been longing to bring about this world. And now, in this time in history, unlike ever before, we have the true parents on this earth, true mother and true father in the spirit world. Giving, they've given us such incredible words to guide our lives by. And so much, they've given us an incredible example and the way they've conducted their life and all that they've initiated during their time, their short time on this earth. Think about what's been created in this movement. It's amazing. And each one of you sitting here has contributed to that. Each and every one of you. Each and every one of you has made it possible for us to be where we are right now. And of course, we still have a ways to go, but we are on that road. And at this time, we're being called and pushed and encouraged to think bigger than we've ever thought before, to do things that maybe we, we, didn't, we, ha we don't think we can do, you know, to bring this nation of America back to God, to bring this nation into a relationship with God that's real and genuine, where people feel the true love of God, and they practice the true love in their relationships with their family and their friends and their coworkers. Can you imagine if America became such a place? And what that would be like for your children and your children's children. And then think of the whole world, all the nations of the world, embodying true love. So we are being called to contribute to the greatest task in all of human history. But guess what? We are not alone. When you see me, it's not just me. There's a whole legion of ancestors surrounding me. Do you see them? <laughs> and actually, when I see you, I don't just see you. I see that legion of ancestors surrounding. There's actually not enough space in this place for all the ancestors. And they're so excited to support us. They're so excited. They really believe in us and they want to work with us in big and small ways. They want to support us and guide us. And they want to participate in our victory. So that not only can we bring a victory here on the earth, but we bring a victory in the spirit world. And those ancestors can, can be liberated because we have the merit of the age, right? We live at this time with true parents and therefore we have an easier path to restoration. But those who've come before us, even if they left, led, led incredibly righteous lives, even if they really strove to be people of goodness and care for others, there was only so far that they could go. And they look to us to be able to be resurrected, to be able to live and be a part of the kingdom of heaven on earth and in, and in heaven. So I just want to share with you just one small example of one way that recently I've experienced my ancestors guiding and supporting me. So as I mentioned, we just moved to this area, New Jersey, living in Bloomfield. Um, but when we were looking for an apartment, it was pretty overwhelming. I'm sure you know, many can relate when you're going from one, one state to another state and you're trying to find an apartment or a house, you feel pretty overwhelmed by it and how are you going to do it? But I absolutely know that my ancestors, and God, of course, supported me in finding pretty much a place beyond what we could have imagined. It's so nice. And the apartment itself is nice, but even more than that, and how we found it was pretty miraculous, the way that everything lined up to find it. But more than that are the people that are our landlords and landlady. So we live in a, in a house where the second floor is the apartment, and the first floor and the basement level um, are where the, the Gincarellis, is that how we say it, Layden? Gincarelli. So they're uh, an Italian family, and I don't know if I said it right, but um, Frank and Rosa, they're the grandmother, you know, the grandfather and the grandmother of their family. And they're just the sweetest, kindest people, and they really treat us like their family. They treat us like their granddaughter and their grandson, and Rose like their great-granddaughter. And you know, they, give, they bring us food, and they, they offer to watch Rose, and their, grand, their granddaughter and Rose you know, play together, and I, I'm just so moved by the fact that they really embrace us like a family. We couldn't ask for better 
landlord and landlady than the Jingarellis. And it, and it hit me that they're Catholic. Um, they're very Catholic. <laughs> and my ancestry is Catholic. I didn't mention it in the beginning, but um, stepping back to you know, Neil and Olga, uh-oh, I think I went too far. There we go. OK, Neil and Olga, perfect. Um, Olga, my grandmother Olga, she was a very devout Catholic. And she raised my mom and my aunt you know, in, a very, um, you know, in a very devoted Catholic way. And I often actually feel the presence of my Catholic ancestors. I think because they were such dutifully religious people that were really striving to you know, connect to God and to live good lives. And, I, and then when I met, um, or when I realized that Rosa, Grandma Rosa, we call her Grandma Rosa and Grandpa Frank. Um, when I met her I real, and them, I realized that they were really dutiful in their Catholic faith. And just recently, we had a really fun little conversation. She spe doesn't speak a lot of English, um, Rosa. But you know, we managed. And she asked me what my religion was. And I said, unification. And she said, oh. I think I have a niece that goes to, and I said, she asked me where I go to church. And I said, well, I'm actually going to Clifton Church. She said, oh, yeah, I think I have a niece that goes to that church. I'm pretty sure she was thinking of Unitarian, but that's OK. <laughs> and <laughs> maybe later on, you know, I'll share more with her. And then she said, yeah, you know, it's all good. It's the same God. I said, yeah, it's the same God. And they said, yeah, one family under God. She said, yeah, one family under God. And it was so beautiful, just this little interaction. Um, when she invited, invited me into her kitchen, she was making the most delicious smelling roast. And I was trying to give her a hint that if she wanted to give me some, I wouldn't mind. But I don't know if it went over as clearly as it should have. <laughs> but I feel so grateful to God, and I feel so grateful to my ancestors for guiding us to this amazing family. And I think if we, if we take a moment to reflect on it, there are so many times in our lives that we're being guided by God, and we're being guided by our ancestors, or supported by our ancestors in little and big and little ways that make our life you know, more joyful, more fulfilling, and easier because of the ancestral support. And the amazing thing is that not only do we have the, the, the benefit or the, the merit of all of the, 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 the lives that were led by our ancestors, but we also have, we can get there. We have, <laughs> there we go, OK, um, true parents. I wanted to make sure you were in suspense for true parents. <laughs> we have true parents. And think about their lineages. Think about their lineages. Think about the spiritual power in the lineage of true father and of true mother. And we, by way of being a part of their family, get the merit of that spiritual power of our true parents that we can tap into at any time. When we call upon our true parents, when we invoke, even just say their name, we get that spiritual power instantly. We can be guided by true parents and what we're doing. So we are truly never alone. So I encourage you, you know, as you're, as you're thinking about how can I do these great things that are being asked of me by God and by true parents, by my community, know that there's so many in the spiritual realm that are ready to support you and guide you every step of the way. And, you know, we also have the future generations to think about. This is my daughter, Rose, by the way. She's 16 months. She was in the con oh, there she is with Layton in the back. Um, <laughs> that's Rose. Hi, Rosie. <laughs> so for me, when I'm thinking about, you know, when I'm thinking about ancestors, I'm also thinking, so I'm thinking back, and I'm also thinking forward. And the question is, what do we want to leave for the next generation, for all the generations to come? What kind of legacy do we want to leave? And for me, I want to leave the best, I want to create the best possible future for Rose and for other children to come, and my great-grandchildren, -grand, my and my great-grandchildren, and so on and so on. 
You know, to be an ancestor that they really are proud of and inspired by, the life that I led. You know, to create something so much better for our children and our children's children and so on to come. That's the great and exciting task that we're working towards. And we are doing. We are making progress as a unification community towards the establishment of the kingdom of heaven on earth. We're all a part of it. Every single one of us. And what we do makes a difference and matters. So I encourage you to be mindful of that ancestor support that's there for you. Call on true parents. Work with true parents. Be uplifted by them and their words. And in parting, I'd just like us to take a moment. If everybody can just look at the screen and quietly just read. This is a segment of a prayer by true father where he's praying about our ancestors. And just read this quietly to yourself for a moment and reflect on it. So I would be remiss if I didn't ask you a very important question. Do you believe that your ancestors love you and want to work with you? Yes. Are you willing to tap into the spiritual power that surrounds you and is within you, passed down to you through all the generations that have come before you? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Are you willing to work with your ancestors to do incredible things in this world? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's go forward. Let's do it together, brothers and sisters. I love you. Adieu.